Hello, thanks for joining me today. Uh, my name's Tim Benson, aka R9 Music. This is my YouTube channel. I'm a synthwave retro pop producer working in electronic music. I've been doing uh, music now for about 30 years. And this is a track that I've just written um, and produced here um, in Watch It in Somerset, where I live. Kind of inspired, really, by the landscape around here and the angry seas and the beautiful sunsets that you get around the coast down here in the UK. This track goes to the seas out on all streaming platforms, out on Spotify, um, Apple Music, Deezer, you name it. You can come and find me at R9 Music on Instagram and Twitter. I will uh, leave all the links in my description and I really hope you get something from this. I use Cubase Pro. That happens to be the um, DAW that I like using, but I'm sure many people watching this will use different things. Hopefully some of what I go through will be relevant you know, to them as well. If you've got any questions, do come back in the comments um, or contact me, DM me, whatever you want to do. Here we go. This is a bit of Ghost of the Sea. Let's have a little listen to what the track's like, and then we'll go from there. Okay, it's weird that, just, you know what it's like, you have a playback through something and you go like, I'm sure I didn't hear that before, and I've been listening to this for ages, but yeah, there was um, a, a track there that sounded louder than usual. Anyway, let's have a look at what is in the track. Kick drum, and uh, that's a 707 Roland TR-707 sample. That's quite quiet actually because it's quite quiet in the track. So put it up a bit for you so you can hear the balance there. It's got some processing on it, but not a huge amount. So there's a bit of fab filter, probably rolling off a bit of the extreme low end. There's some um R bass enhancing a little bit around 60 hertz. There's a bit of compression and there's a little bit of transient enhancement from TransX from Waves. Then all of these are going, um, they're all being sent to side chains um, to key compressors. Um, this pumping effect that's very of the synthwave genre is kind of quite big in this whole track and I kind of think enhances the kind of feeling of motion as well like with the waves and that kind of the vibe of the track as well but like um all of these um are actually being sent pre-fader because it's very low in the mix this track so um it seemed to be quite useful to send it pre-fader so that there was enough level to actually uh, key the compressors um so that's what's happening with that one um then this is a different kind of kick drum A lot more low end in that sound. Now that's actually kick two 
from Sonic Academy um, creating that. And I, I think it works really well when you add it with the other kick. Um, It's got an analogy vibe as well, but it's probably a slightly more up to date sound and kick style wise. Um, next up is another um, sample, actually. It's a Lin drum again. Now you may see a whole block here as if, like, I just like sort of taken all of this as a pattern. I haven't. I've just taken the sample and made the patterns, you know, um, from there myself. Um, groove agent. Oh, um. That's a Steinberg plugin, and that has actually got like um, a little snare going on in there. quite nice to have it in Groove Agent because it's quite receptive to velocity there rather than a sample like this isn't changing with velocity so a lot of the time I do find I've got MIDI instruments as well as samples but even in the drums because you've got more control over the velocity um, that is an 80s gated snare kind of sample going on there um, and then you've got some hats again from Groove Agent. Um, I've got a lot of control here with like the filtering, cut off, and stuff. I've got like um, all kinds of different sort of things I can do. I often don't need them I'm on these hats, I think they're fairly pure. But you know, you can pitch them, uh, you can uh, like control the volume, and they're velocity sensitive. So, you know. Um, that's a, a good thing without using a virtual instrument like that, I think. Uh, then we've got some reverse. And a little crash at the end of that. Um, it's, uh, I say it's a crash. It's got a distinct sort of ridey kind of cymbal hit on it. Um, then I've got a kick. Which does have a little bit of filtering. It's like a drop kick. I use that at um, certain points to emphasize things in the track. Um, I've got a mono sort of effect here. I don't use it very much, but. Yeah. There's various other little bits here, you know, not particularly interesting, but little sound effects. Yeah, that come in now. Sometimes a bit of reverb or something on them. Nothing dramatically interesting. Um, that sounds quite important. That's a sonar. And you'll hear that all the way through the track, really. It turns up sort of just punctuating little bits of the track. Um, I kept it pretty pure, but like I had some Echo Boy in there and some Valhalla I was sending to, which was um, a good thing. Right, um, adding that nice ambience to it. Okay. We've got some interesting weird effects going on in here. Again, quite sort of nautical themed kind of sounds, watery stuff. Um, there's some water world stuff going on in here. Yeah. And freesound.org good place for some of that kind of stuff um many many other places on the net but like you know um then we're on to bass tracks that's carbon and lecture i've just taken you can see it's not a preset i've kind of created that sound myself i've got like uh some filtering going on in there um you know some modulation it's it's pretty simple sound, um, and then that's an Oppenheimer, um, quite a thin sound. It's sort of pitched up, um, but actually works really well together. The two bass sounds. So. Yeah, it's weird. They they work a lot better than you would think individually. 
together. That higher harmonic content really helps the bass come through in the track. Um, the Juno pad here. That's um, Cherry Audio, DCO 106. I love that. It's great. Sounds very like the original to me. And then um, we've got a bit of the old Roland Brass synth. Yeah, great sound. Um, and that just kind of works in keeping with the other sound, really. Um, Next up, we've got a choir pad in there, um, which is an interesting one. Absolutely fantastic, this choir library. Um, one of the best things from East West, really, they're Hollywood choirs. Um, I've used it in some more orchestral-based stuff. Um, the, uh, the East West library is incredible, but a lot of it isn't very relevant for you know, unless you're doing particular sort of more like uh, sound for picture, that kind of thing, I would say. Um, you know, you might not find it very useful in writing a synthwave track, but like I love the sound of the choir and I just thought it really fitted the vibe of the C thing. So, you know, um, wrote in some chord cool movements there, which um, follow the track and that's a male choir. I've also got a choir sample here. Yes, you're thinking it doesn't sound very like a choir. You'd probably be right. It's got a compressor. It's just got this mad bit of filter jam and filter gate as well on it, which is having a lot of effect. That's what it sounded like. So it was a choir, but <laughs> that oddly became really important, that sound in the whole track. And I don't think you'd ever have known that that was particularly a choir. So there we go. Um, this is a really rubbish synth, this art. It's horrible. It's even a horrible sound when I listen to it, but oddly, it really, really works in the track. I could have used many other synths, probably, which would have sounded nicer, but... It's not always the best that sound from a, you know, this is an amazing plug-in. Um, point of view that cost me lots of money. Sometimes these kind of cheaper plugins can actually be interesting um, in their own way, sonic character and all that. Um, this is sort of underwater piano that I've kind of created, which is just Minigram from Air, which is a really good uh, plugin. Sounds really nice, but I've just added some effects which have change it from the very pure sound which it naturally is to a much more weird and watery one it starts to build up that delay as it goes on with the track then we've got some leads that come in here the leads are very important in this track because they come in and out in a way that kind of like moves you from sort of one vibe to another as the leads change um. just panned a little bit apart there the two leads one left one right um got carbon and lecture again i've sort of programmed that one in and then carbon and lecture again doing um a sort of ice castle sawtooth wing um I don't know why I end up using Carbon Lecture that much on this. It's not a synth I often use, but I think it was more like the idea that I was going to try and program stuff from the beginning, and it's a very simple synth like that, which has its benefits. And look, surprise, surprise, it's Carbon Lecture again. Using a kind of square waveform there instead of a sawtooth. Right, that's a nice... Um, 
fat lead sound from uh, Anna too there, um, which I think works really well. Another plug there. Um, I'm not paid by Sonic Academy, but I do like their plugins. They're good stuff. If they want to, um, you know, give me free plugins, I'll be a happy man. Okay. Um, guitars. <laughs> with a lot of pumping going on on them, thanks to the air pumper, which gives that kind of... It's like um, a sucky kind of compression. It's like that kind of um, thing you get when you key in a side chain, but uh, in, in its own way, um, it's got a different degree of control with it than that. So I use both, but like I like that. It's sort of instant side chaining. It's good. Um... And that is probably the majority of what's going on in that track, um, as quickly as I could go through it, really. Um, so the only other things is I've got some time-based effects. All of my time-based effects come into effects channels. Um, so we've got Echo Boy. We've got a gated um, thing, thanks to Valhalla. We've got Valhalla Supermassive as well. Um, then we've got um, a drum bus, which has got thing I love on every drum bus, which is the Kramer PI. Absolutely love that. And <laughs> just to add a bit more crunch to it all, um, Quadrifuzz version 2 from Steinberg, which is part of Cubase, it's got this great ability to swap the you know to to sort of distort the band separately which is a really nice feature um you might wonder why there's a snare group here that's because we had three snare samples and i fed them all from that into the drum bus um so i grouped them together and then fed the output of the that goes into the drum bus there so that's what's going on um bass obviously it's great this to just take, if you've got multiple tracks, you just group them down, put them into a group, and then you, you've got less to deal with then in the, in, the, in the final mix. And you can add some more, uh, you know, maybe dynamics or EQ to the bus if you want, or time-based effects. Um, so I've got a little bit of EQ, and, and I've got the DBX uh, 160, which I really love, and that's... I think the Waves version of that, actually. Yeah, it is the Waves version. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because there's one by UAD, which is really good, too. Um, and the pads with a bit of roll-off. And the effects have got a bit of stereo width on them. Um, the leads have got a little bit of automation. Um, and, you know, not a lot more bit of width to them again. Um Leads too, they've got some of that filter jam plug in that really messes up all the sound fantastically. Um, the guitars are in there and they've got a bit of compression. And then actually, all of the effects, um, are the time based effects, come into a group um, and they're just rolled off on the bottom to stop the mud ending up in there. These are VCA channels, and the VCA channels really allow me to control. Um, different things like sort of where I've got two two kick drums I've got a nice balance between the two of them but I might want to change that up or down in the track and I can do that with a VCA control the same with the bass and the snare so it's really a way of sort of affecting the how much signal I'm sending into the bus into the group uh, the bus is there so you know, not every program has got that ability, um, but like I like that on Cubase. It's a good one. There's very little automation going on on here. There's a little bit going on on a few tracks. There's some, you know, uh, some bits that are going on with like filters and stuff on uh, some of the leads. But overall, it's 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 a really simple track like that. Um, <laughs> We'll be right back. 
how the um, choir are really sort of pumping there with the um, uh, uh, with the sort of either I've used a pumper or I've probably used the side chaining on the compression. Yeah, I've side chained that on the compression. Um, yeah, on the main um, stereo mix bus, you might be interested to see what is happening there. Trying to keep this as succinct as I can, but right. So a little bit of roll off, a little bit of top bump. Um, the fantastic SSL um, just doing a tiny bit. <laughs> tiny little bit of stereo imaging and then a tiny little bit of L3 ultra maximizer look ahead limiting going on at the end so that is about that for Ghost of the Sea um, any questions any comments um, you know far away thank you for watching I hope this was in some way interesting and informative do go and um, stream a track. All the links are in the description. Tell me if there's any other tracks you'd like to walk through or indeed any other techniques, things you would be interested in learning, in mixing, in mastering um, or in writing um, because I will be doing more of these videos hopefully in the future. Thanks very much. All the best for now.